All right. I, I love this stage. I think it's like one of my favorite parts of this conference. But it's like when you're up here, you feel like you're having to step into like the danger zone. Okay, I've broken the wall. Now we're good. Uh, I'm Hampton Catlin, uh, at H Catlin, because uh, I'm kind of a Twitter whore. Um, you should follow me. Um, I tweet lots of very, very interesting things, also completely stupid things. Uh, I work at a company called MoveWeb. Uh, the last two years, we've been kind of a stealth startup. Uh, so basically, nobody knows what the hell I've been doing. Uh, but we're, <laughs> Jim knows. Uh, we run a bunch of mobile sites, uh, Macy's and Sports Authority and a whole bunch of them, but kind of been building a platform on the back end that we're going to be releasing this fall. So, uh, you know, look forward to the future of me pimping that. Um, I, I'm mostly known, or I used to be known as the Hamill guy, but that's changed. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, that's kind of changed, uh, and you uh, served by being the SaaS guy. But the problem with that one is it kind of has to come with a caveat. Uh, which is that I only invented the idea of the modern pre-compiler language and the core concept and design of SAS, but other people have worked way harder than me to mature the language, make it usable, and without them, SAS would be a footnote and most of the crazy cool features are their idea. So there you go, there's the, it's, it's a little more complicated kind of relationship. Um, but you know, I'll take it, the SAS guy. Um, all right, so what I'm talking about is, yeah, the user, or your user, the animal. You know, and this is really about ourselves, right? This stuff applies to your users, but it applies to all of us and how we think about ourselves, how we think about our coworkers, our friends, our family. Um, programmers were extremely analytical, all of us. I mean, it's so funny when we have a thing at MoveWeb where I think I started this. I'll kind of call people, and I'm like, you're being an engineer right now. Um, and I do kind of mean it derogatorily, because generally it means you're thinking so analytical about a problem. You know, maybe like, oh gosh, just try to get an engineer talking to a marketing person. You know, and, and, or try to think like one for a second as an engineer, and you're like, but what, why? That's not, I mean, it's close, but not, oh, right? Like these, these you know, oh, it's, it's a powerful thing. You're like, well, yes, it is powerful, but you know, we, we try to break things down into boxes. Uh, and we also, well, because this is what you do when you program, right? You're obviously taking a very complicated real life problem and trying to break it down into little bits. Um, and we also then believe in rationality. All of us here, if you're a programmer at all, you believe in the core of your job is to rationalize. You believe in a world where things can be ordered. Um, and so we like to think of ourselves as purely logical animals, right? I mean, how many times when you find a bug do you kind of look back later and go, or like when you find one, you're like, huh, that's like impossible. Somebody else must have put that there. I was thinking correctly about that problem. I understood everything about it. You know, okay, I guess, get blame, all right. I did type that, but you know we don't think about what we don't know, right? We're and this is what the career is. I mean, it, it's a normal thing, but you you don't know everything, and oftentimes problems are a lot blurrier. So, um, one of the things that kind of the core concept here, obviously, is we are animals. Uh, this is Darwin. Um, you know, through this bomb into the middle of Western culture with this idea. Um, I think, you know, obviously uh, biologists and stuff had been working previous to him. Um, we knew we were, we knew we had fleshy substance. We knew we had a brain, we had a heart like an animal. Um, but, you know, we didn't really fully get the concept of us being, you know, equal with other animals. And that's still an uncomfortable idea for most of us. Um, but I love uh, Dawkins has this awesome uh, image of, you know, if, if you, if all the, the mothers, your mother and her mother, her mother, and they all held hands, and this is the, talking about the mitochondrial Eve, uh, which is our, everybody's great-great-grandmother, you, you eventually end up that they're holding hands with something that would be like, you know, a predecessor to a chimpanzee. And then from there, you can go, and they're holding hands all the way back to, you know, to a modern-day chimpanzee. And that would roughly go around the Earth. Um, but, like, how amazing would that be to see that, right? Like, this real visible clear concept that, whoa, I mean, we are special, but okay, we're that too. Um, now, this is a complicated idea um, because the way that Western culture has been, like our re most religion had been, it teaches that, especially Christianity, that we are flawed people. You were born sinful, right? You can only become good by, you know, joining a monastery, becoming an ascetic, something like that, right? That's how you do good, or, or salvation, uh, obviously, is, is the primary message. But this idea that we are animals, you know, and dark animals, a bad kind of animal. I don't mean, you know, Dawkins, nice, aren't we all hugging each other kind of animals. That, that our true nature is darkness, 
that we are kind of horrible and if left alone, we destroy and maim and just all of this, right? And so, you know, here's this idea. And this definitely got mixed in with race uh, around the same period. You see a lot of racist literature using uh, Darwin. Because um, the idea that the savage, right, they're like an animal, right? And then there's the, the poor, helpless, super, super glowing white woman who's, you know, being terrorized by people who are more animalistic than her. Um, and then this concept starts going into the modern era, and we have pieces of shit like this. Um, I hate this book. I'm sorry if you like it. I just seriously, seriously hate it. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, so here's the plot of the novel. I think they were shipwrecked. There's all these kids. They're going to a boarding school or something. They end up on an island. Oh, spoiler. yeah. Well, I'm sure everybody's in here in the middle of reading Lord of the Flies today. So um, <laughs> I'll, I think I'm just going to spoil this like your eighth grade teacher did. Um, so Cliff Notes, come on, right? Uh, so, you know, they end up on an island, everything's going all right, there's no adults around, the kids kind of start to build a society and do voting and make government, and then just all hell breaks loose. They just start, like, killing each other at the end, and they're beating this one kid, and then there's, like, tyranny, and, you know, they light the whole island on fire, and then, like, the adult shows up in the end, and they're all like, oh, what, us? We didn't do anything, right? <laughs> and there's this idea that if, if there are not adults around, that we just go straight into this horrible, animalistic, destructive path, right? And, you know, I, I look at things like, you know, I love looking at the stars, but I love looking at cities, right? I love seeing this, this beautiful scape of San Francisco, my, my new home, and it's just, it's gorgeous, right? Was this built by people who are just trying to completely murder everyone every second of the day and then just, oh, we happened to build this? Or you look at my favorite feat of engineering, I just, the Concorde, just... Like, I actually, I got the chance to walk into a Concorde that they had at a museum, and just, like, I, I actually, like, teared up. Like, it was just so beautiful. The, the machine, it just, you know, it only, it only actually crashed, by the way, because of, uh, I think it was a DC-10. Uh, it's one of the worst built uh, planes in history, and it took off, and a piece fell off under the runway, and then the Concorde hit it. So, thanks, DC-10. Uh, just proving the point that you're the worst designed airplane in history. You even took out the Concorde. Um, and yeah, but we look at these feats of engineering. Oh, sorry, here's the last one. Oh, no, it doesn't really show up. So uh, this is uh, an eye optical map thing. Have you, has anybody, have you guys had this done? It's this crazy machine. Uh, yeah, this blew my mind. I'd never had it done. Uh, and it, it caused, though, my, op so a little, my op optician was like, she, she looked at it and she goes, huh. That's interesting. And I'm like, whoa, top 10 things I did not want to hear come out of your mouth. Um, so there's this like giant thing up in the top left corner that's not supposed to be there. And she's like, have you been in the Amazon recently? And I was like, no. <laughs> um, yeah, she's like, she's like, oh, then it's probably nothing. But I've never seen that before. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, so yay, technology. Um, yeah, but you know, the, the how, how the, it poses the question, how do we build all this, right? And this is not something that. Uh, the Lord of the Fliesites, uh, <laughs> that's a new term. Um, you know, th they haven't not struggled with, like, how does society exist, right? And the kind of prevailing concept has been that uh, the government, education, the church, and your family structures are what keep us from devolving into craziness. Um, I, I, oof, nice part. I think it's totally wrong. I think it's, the, and the math, the, uh, the, the experiments that have been done are showing this is absolutely not true. We organize, if anything. Uh, if you people put people on an island, they will form something, and they will try to work together. And that's just, our ancestors didn't, well, I guess this, because I'm getting out of myself. Um, our ancestors didn't survive because they just stabbed each other all the time. It's not a really good method. And so this is, there's this concept called strong reciprocity. Uh, what strong reciprocity is, is basically, I'm will, an individual, so in the most basic kind of economic and human model, um, you know, if I see a wallet, I steal it because I just got an advantage. If nobody saw me, it's fine. Um, like, uh, just being selfish, right? The kind of Adam Smith, just, just, we just take. We take, take, take. That's all we do. It actually, uh, strong reciprocity shows that uh, we will actually cause harm to ourselves. We will harm ourselves in order to ensure cooperation in the group. Like, it, it's almost like being, it's not the same thing as huggy nice, but it's being super nice. You're, you're losing out 
so that rules can exist and things can happen normally. And so I, there's this thing called the ultimatum game uh, that is the link. I would prefer you, yeah. Yeah, just Google it. It's like the first result. That's a lot easier. Um, but it basically works like this. Um, <laughs> I'll put on SlideShare. You can go to it, download the whole thing, copy and paste, or Google it. Um, so this is, it's, I, th I think I can explain this a little better uh, verbally. So basically, you get two people, and you, you, you give some amount of money to person A, right? So I think $10 is kind of the standard amount they've used. Um, so you give them $10. And much like, imagine it's after a heist, right? We got, the, we got the goods. Now we have to figure out how to split it. And this person A gets to make a complete ultimatum decision of how, how they split it. You know, 50-50, I'm taking it all, you get nothing. Uh, you know, you get one dollar and I'll keep nine, whatever. Um, what happens is person B has only one thing they can do, accept it or reject it. If they accept it, they get the money. If they reject it, nobody gets shit. And what ends up happening is, so yeah, basically if somebody offers me a dollar, right, if I reject it, I just lost a dollar. I, I got nothing in the end, right? I didn't have any success. If I accept it, even though the guy was kind of a dick, I got a dollar, right? I came out ahead. Um, and they found people by huge, huge margins. I mean, it's been done a bunch, a bunch of times. Obviously, the margins kind of change. But definitely, people choose to harm themselves. They, they, if it's unfair, they say, no, I don't want anything. You're not getting anything. We have this really, really strong sense to kind of, for right and wrong, for doing what needs to be done, for making sure that people are acting fair. And the funny part is, so this experiment, uh, a lot of the people were like, well, it's not a lot of money, right? Obviously, $1, giving somebody the finger, it's kind of nice. It's a nice little free, it's cheaper than a movie ticket. Um, then they went to Indonesia and I think did $300 or something, and it was like half of a year's salary uh, for the people they had to do it. And uh, they found that by country, the line exactly what was considered fair. Some countries, uh, like uh, former Soviet states, people were willing to accept less. They thought that was fair to not get as much. Um, but industrialized nations, right around the 50-50 mark, you see an immediate spread. And even with like half a year's salary, people would just lose out, just to punish the other person for not playing fair. Um, and there's so many different studies, all sorts of, a lot of them way more complicated than this. Um, but it just, it really shows you there's something going on here. So this is wrong. This is totally wrong. Um, I mean, it's much more complicated at minimum, right? Um, and when we look at something like war, right, isn't that the thing we think of the most craven, horrible human thing? I mean, if, if there's what's the worst about humanity, it's this. Well, if you think about it, all these guys who went to war, did they go for glory or money or fun? No. Like, they went out of sense of duty and what was right. You know, whether whichever side you want to pick is right, obviously probably neither is. Um, but every, people are going, and their whole lives, they have a girlfriend, maybe a kid, uh, they are putting their life on the line. I mean, that is amazing. Like, can you imagine doing it? Like, I will die. That's the other, that's the outcome. I'm going, I will probably die. But it's worth it to me to do that. It's so funny that war, that one of the worst things is actually a really great indicator of just how nice we are. <laughs> um, so maybe we should trust our users a little bit more if they're probably willing to die for right things. Um, so here's a, this was surprising to me when I started working at Wikimedia uh, a while ago. Um, that basically... Only 75% of the articles had ever been vandalized, ever. So, so, I don't know, Michael was like, that's a lot. And I'm like, I assumed writing scripts and stuff, it'd be, you know, 100%, because you can do a lot of damage really quickly. Uh, that's all of them that have ever, or, sorry, 75% have never been vandalized, right? So only 25% have. So it's way, way less than, at least I was assuming. Did anybody else here <laughs> think you people were that nice? I assume everybody talks about Wikipedia, oh, you vandalize it all the time. Um, and even more, 50% of the vandalisms were caught in four minutes or less. Uh, and that is not organized by the Wikimedia Foundation. That happens organically. They did not, there's no system, they didn't put it in. It just, pe the community organized around that. Um, so stop designing <laughs> just for the bad. And how we do that is you make bad behavior ineffective and reward good behavior. So Wikipedia, to roll back, one button. That's why it's no fun. Oh, I vandalize a page, click. All right. That wasn't fun. Um, like, it, it's not a, the, it's actually by empowering other users was the real solution, right? It wasn't, oh, we have to put in, if we put a CAPTCHA in the reverse, something, I don't know, whatever, um, or lock everything down. No, it's actually the openness. In fact, you, can, you could roll back good commits just because you felt like it. 
Um, they can roll back yours, and again and again. And it just works out. Um, and also reward good behavior. Uh, particularly for Wikipedia, they started a thing called Barn Stars forever ago, which is basically modern badges, um, but all driven by the community, no algorithms involved. Um, so why do we do this stuff, right? Why are we nice, right? And it's about cooperation. It's about that we all succeed. Our ancestors did a much, much better job if they were nice, right? The asshole died. I mean, that's what happened. So if I'm an asshole, and I get cancer, and I die, and I have some kids around, and I'm in a tribe, they're probably not going to take great care of those kids if I was really horrible to them, or killed their brother, or stole from them, or whatever, right? They're just like, nope, nope, out, done. Um, if you were a nice person, and you helped them out, and made tools, and did your expertise, and traded fairly, they might take care of your children. That's something we do today. Um, so let's just talk more, the most important topic here, me. Um, Genie.com, I have uh, 5,084 of my direct ancestors are charted on there now. Um, those are all grandparents. This isn't cousins and shit. Um, I just, it's so bad. I think I don't care about them. I'm like, whatever. Um, but uh, this is a list of just one of the chains of the one I've gotten back the furthest. So my dad's up there, and his father, and his mother, and you can keep going. Um, but basically what I'll highlight is, so these are ones with Wikipedia articles that I just highlighted. Um, all the way back to King I Einstein Huffed Arsons Feed the King. Um, it past William the Conqueror, by the way. We went past that. Um, honestly, once you're William the Conqueror, people have done the research. It's a lot easier. Um, so these are the pictures of the Wikipedia articles of those people. Um, handsome, handsome bunch. Uh, so uh, do you guys know the movie Braveheart, I assume? Um, it's Michael's most hated film. Um, so uh, that guy, uh, oh, I'm totally blanking. What was it again? Robert the Bruce. Sorry, I was going to forget that. So Robert the Bruce, one of the characters, he's my 22nd great-grandfather. Um, so what? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you, aren't you guys just enthralled with this? Um, you can get my autograph later. Uh, <laughs> you guys are the same. That's the crazy part. Everybody here, every single person in this room is exactly the same in this regard, right? It's a great article. This is actually a link you probably should follow in the Atlantic. Awesome article about this. But I'll kind of step you through the basics. Um, you have two parents, first one generation back, right? Go back another four, four grandparents. You have eight great grandparents. We can maybe go, this is how we calculate the fourth generation. We keep going, if we go to 28, we get 268 million, and that was about 1100 AD. And roughly 35 generations ago, or 961 AD, not that long ago, if you actually like England had kings and stuff at this point. 34 billion ancestors. There were 400 million people on the planet. So something's funny here, right? These numbers don't add up. Um, maybe some of us are cousins around here? Um, and that 400 million thing, that's people who are alive. Not necessarily successful ancestors. It takes a lot more to be a successful ancestor. You have to be well-liked, you need to have money, you need to raise your kids well. It's actually you have to raise your kids so that they will have kids. You can raise kids and have it so they won't have kids, right? Just birthing isn't enough. You have to continue the process so in the community they can find a job, they can get money, that when a plague comes, they might be helped out, they would be able to go someplace. Um, so of these guys in this shot, uh, that is not an ancestor. That one isn't, that one isn't, that one isn't, that one isn't, that one isn't. Let's see how fast I can go through this. None of these guys, none of them, none of them. Nope, not even that guy. None of them are successful ancestors because dead people can't have babies or raise them. It's a very clear fact. So if you were on the side of a losing battle out of those 400 million on the planet, you didn't get much. You're not, probably, probably none of your grandparents were in that shot because they are dead. Um, so what does this mean? It means that uh, your ancestors are very likely, again and again, gonna be rulers, right? You're an emperor, you have like 400 concubines, well, they had kids, that's 800. They're all fed incredibly well. They're given good positions. They maybe become a mayor of a town, get married again. So it's highly selected towards, if you just start doing genealogical research, just go up any one of your lines. You know, each one, it, you can get up to, you know, that, the one I showed you is one out of 34 billion uh, that I could have followed, right? But I happened to hit that one. So there's a lot of options. You will hit that, and you also will if you have a spouse uh, and you're generally from the same global uh, genetic pools, uh, you will be related, so enjoy that. Um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, also, uh, was it, it's, um, 
Charlemagne, if, if you're a European at all, actually, uh, uh, you're related to them, uh, uh, Genghis Khan, I think everyone on the planet was a good calculation. He traveled around a lot. What? One third. One third, yeah. It's like, um, yeah, but that's the ones that they can track. I think it's actually bigger if you work out the, that they left. And also, sorry, the other point is these are great kings, right? Asshole kings didn't work out so hot, right? They came in with swords and killed everyone who was your kid. Um, and they probably became the town jester if they lived. Um, so your users are, this is their legacy. This is your legacy. All of us. We, we're not the people who died, people who sucked. That is not our grandparents. They were cool people. So when I hear this, this just infuriates me. And I hear it from more operations people than anything else. Just, I don't know what that means. Um, but, oh, our users are so stupid. They always do X. Or, oh, no, no, our users are too stupid for this. I hate that. I hate that attitude. You're the one that's stupid if you're doing something that wrong that's causing them to do that, right? Like, that's our job to make sure that things are clear and make sense, right? But to treat your users with such derision, to assume that they can't behave normally on your site, that they won't act like adults, they won't do a good job, that is so shit. That's such a bad way to build something. Um, and you end up with just a lockdown, you know, kind of weirdly insulting tool that doesn't actually do anything. Um, you want to make users feel smart and helpful. That's that's the if you can do that. I mean, have you ever used a site where like, do people use like Cora and stuff or like Stack Overflow? Anybody like actually use that? Like you, I know that people do, and they feel so good. Like you really do. You get a little buzz. Uh, I use TripAdvisor, and uh, I write reviews on there, and. Uh, it sends me an email telling me how many people have read my review over the last week. So it was like I wrote one for a resort in Hawaii we really liked, and it's like 5,000 people read this review. And I'm like, that is so cool. That makes me feel so good. Just like right in the middle of the day, I'm like, all right, I did something nice, right? Because we want to feel that. That's, that's, we all got here. We're all alive because our ancestors did useful things and good. You know, I'm not saying they were puppies and handing out cash on the like, street corner, right? That's not my definition of good, at least. That's stupid, probably. Um, but <laughs> that wasn't nice. Um, but you, want to, <laughs> you want to make your users feel smart and helpful, and, and also powerful, right? You want to enable them to do things. Give them uh, the, the, the power to achieve. Um, the other part, by the way, I just kind of want to insert here. I hate it when people do uh, just throw up a wiki and call that support. It's not. It's, that isn't, it's not the same thing as Wikipedia either, because you don't have a community yet, right? You really have to work at it. That is not support, okay? Don't ever do that. I think engineers, like, this is when I tell people thinking like an engineer, it'll be like, oh, well, we could, we put up a, a, a Cora or like Stack Overflow clone. So support sorted. You're like, what? No, this is hard. Um, so we have to help people be good. We, you know, you want to give feedback. If you send out emails, if you send a, hey, how's, how are things going to your customers? You know, thanks for doing that on our wiki. That's the kind of thing that gets people interested. So I just want to go really quick into some good design, yeah, unlikely spots, um, for making people feel really good about themselves and empowered as users. And this is where we're simulating or stimulating that part of us that was bred to want to feel good and important. And I'm going to focus on Farmville. Uh, one of the most derided things in history for a lot of reasons, uh, but it has some really, really cool stuff in it if you kind of step back and look at what they're actually doing. So I love, um, right down here, first of all, it's about your social status. That's what they're showing you. How many friends do I have? Right? Lots of Facebook uses this a lot. It's up towards the top. You don't need to see that list. You know who you're friends with. But it makes you feel like, oh, I'm liked, I'm liked, I'm liked. There's a subconscious, I'm liked. Yeah, yeah, this is good. People like me. Yay. Like counting your birthday messages on Facebook kind of thing, right? But down here, we're like, oh, we have neighbors. We have a group, a community. I feel important. I feel good. Um, we have this shows up. Uh, a pink cow showed up on your farm. She can't find a home. Will you ask your friends to help her find a home? Just emotional baiting. They just picked a character, put a name on it, all this is is to post something on your wall. I mean, there's no gameplay aspect to it. There's no cow. The cow isn't sad. You don't collect cows. There's no cow bonus you get for the day. Like, you just do this, and a fictional cow is helped because you post it on your wall. Helped. I don't know, right? Like, th this is the stuff that just, it's going right towards that core psyche of us feeling like, oh, share, oh, look, I helped. Um, and then the, the one I... 
I love this design touch here. So if you go to one of your friend's farms, they say, hey, Hampton, these crows are destroying his crops. Please help get rid of them. OK, if you hit accept or cancel, it does the same damn thing. It doesn't do anything. There was little animated crows on the field. But if you didn't go there, they're not there. They only appeared because you went to the farm. It's not a real thing. Crows is not a gameplay element to Farmville. They're just there to make you feel helpful, to make you feel good, right? This is like, it's, it's like a, um, a machine that is crafted to trick us into feeling like helpful, nice people. Um, and <laughs> that sounds horrible. Um, yeah, but I love it. But if you hit cancel, it's the same thing. There's nothing. Um, and I love, like, yeah, how the hell does this work? Um, most programmers, we love analytic. What does that mean? Was there a field? Did a database entry get in? Are we going to calculate it? Can we put it in Hadoop and figure out what's happening? Um, I love this quote so much. Uh, it gets pointless. Yes, at first, you get sucked in wanting to get all the ribbons, all the trees, and all the animals, and wanting to plant different crops, get buildings, and beat your friends. But finally, when you do all this, which is about a month if you try, the game stops having any point. Um, clearly, this is a game review by a traditional game reviewer. Um, missing the whole point here, right? I mean, clearly, he says it's pointless. Um, missing why people do it. Well, I don't get it. I got all the gold, right? And I'll say I did play, you know, I, I, I played for like a week or something, and I was like trying to like, I was playing like SimCity or like one of the simulation games. I'm trying to like build out things and make more money. And then, yeah, then it dawned on me. I'm like, whoa, okay. It doesn't have any of this backed up because that isn't the point. That isn't what they're trying to build. Um, so maybe you should make some of your apps a little bit more like Farmville. Uh, it's just a concept. Um, all right, so uh, let me wrap up here. Uh, first of all, we are animals. Face it. Go talk to a therapist if you need to. Uh, I think this is, this is really a crucial thing to understand about yourself. It's a positive thing if you really look at it the right way. Um, we're mostly good, and we can even say that empirically. And I'm using good fairly loosely here. Um, you know, they, not petting kittens on the street thing. Oh my gosh, hold on, I have enough time. Mini rant. <laughs> Pets. If an alien species came down and saw that we were feeding these little creatures in our homes, spending money on them, imp uh, economic resources, worry, time, effort, for things that are basically evolved to in invoke in us emotions, they, they make faces that we respond to, they act like they love us. Sorry, I know this is terrible. But it's true, like the, 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 there's this, we are so nice that another creature figured out how to hack the system, right? <laughs> like, that's amazing. A aliens would be like, wow, you guys are so stupid. What are you doing? It's just, it, it, does it work? Is it working for you? Um, Lord of the Flies is horrible. Write your eighth grade teacher, tell her or him to stop. They should not be giving this stuff out. What a horrible way to start off your life in literature, right? Oh, yeah, everyone's horrible. Um, yeah, I, you have awesome ancestors. Everyone here, all of our shared ancestors, because high cousin, high cousin, high cousin, um, they're awesome. They're awesome people, and they must have been because that's the only... You probably had some duds in there, right? But that was lucky. That was lucky. But they probably had kids who were awesome. Um, and you want to make your users feel special and important. Treat them with that respect that they're like that, right? We want to give them kingdoms. We want to give them that feeling of empowerment. We want to give that to them. And if we can make that, if we can give them the chance to do these things, then we can do something really, really amazing. Um, I just want to say happy birthday, Michael. I know this has been said like nine times. So he said, yeah, see that look? See that look right there? That's the, um, <laughs> that's the look I'm used to every morning. Um, you can follow him on Twitter at Mallory's. Uh, happy anniversary, Chip. <laughs> Chip. 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 It's Chip. 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 Um, I love that picture still. Uh, all right. Yeah, follow me at hcatlin. Uh, and thanks for listening. Yeah.